must break my strength and stay this horrid whore to swallow that empty cup. And she said, God, I will go. I will go. Give me a time, I will go. And her children, she would get sick and her body would be full of infirmity. And her children would get sick. And her beautiful children start to die. And she would say to God, oh, she loved the children so dearly, she didn't have walls. And the children will always say, Mom, I will see you here. Mom, it's okay. I'm going to be okay according to the arms of Jesus. I'm going to be okay. And all the children died one by one as she delayed to the call. And as she delayed, and she delayed, and children died before the age of 12, they all died. They went to heaven. Will we delay for you and preach in the name of Jesus our life? But how would we delay to the calling that God has called us to? And only one child was left. And she couldn't delay any longer. And he started to preach. It was a woman. And in those days, women preachers would preach the gospel of the good news. How many people do you know, church, that are not saved? Have you delayed? Why have you delayed? Why have you delayed in ministering the gospel? Because you think they won't like you? But how can we see go to a lost eternity to perish a place that's called for demons? A place that holds Satan? A place Doctors that didn't know 
Jesus. Tested the blood pressure. They wanted to know what's going on with the people in this church. In our church. And they tested and investigated everything. And they said she's healthy. There's nothing wrong. We find nothing wrong with her medically. She's perfectly healthy. We cannot understand. When she woke up after six hours, she led them all to Jesus. Doctors that don't believe until they see the signs of it. But God is a God of miracles. And yes, it's great to be slain under the power of the name and heart of Jesus. We know that. But what about you and me? This is a sign and a wonder. Now today, I want to talk to you about signs and wonders. Now as you know, Marietta moved in signs and wonders. This house is a house of signs and wonders. And you want to see a sign and a wonder look and see. We have a number of people here that can't wait. Up. They are slain and translating, and if you have the courage to ask them what happened to them, and they will tell you. But many of you that have had similar encounters, some of them don't even understand it. They will tell you what happened to them. Today, the word of God says in Isaiah, if I can preach that the power and the glory of God is so, so strong here. It's very hard to preach in this power. But I give preeminence to the Holy Spirit, my great teacher, and I honor the Lord Jesus, God, Jehovah God, for the calling on my life. And I give Praise, glory, and honor for my spiritual father, Apostle Maldonado, that truly moves and signs by the miracles. He is a man that loves the life of sacrifice. And I stand on his shoulders today of the sacrificial life of Jesus. Serving God is a life of sacrifice. The greatest sacrifice is the greatest life. Isaiah 8, 18. He says, here I am. Here I am. Here I am, the children whom the Lord has given me. For we are for signs and wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. The Lord is saying that you are created for signs and wonders. Every one of you. Created in such perfection, so wonderfully and beautiful. Your life on earth and everything you do for Jesus, but because you carry Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and lives with you. When you give your heart to Jesus and you say, Today I really give my heart to Him, I don't want to keep this life anymore. Then you arrive and you have to see Jesus the Lord and Savior. And you say, you say with all your heart, Today, Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I will no longer worship Satan. And I break agreement with Satan's kingdom. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'm in love in my heart with the Lord of my life. When you say that, you are saved in Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus comes and lives in you. You're not that old person. Surely, when you say that and you really mean it, the Spirit of God comes and lives in you. That Spirit of God is the Spirit of Jesus. That Spirit of God, everything that Jesus did, he says in the book of John, you will do greater things than Jesus did. And if that spirit is with inside of you, then he will move in signs and wonders. Stephen moved in signs and wonders. And the signs and wonders that Stephen moved, it was so great that they came to find and as they were about to, Paul was 
was part of the murder. You know, Marietta never had a word typed out. She never had a word written. She never preached it, prepared a sermon. God would give her a text. I remember for all the years that I ran an intercession ministry, I had a text and I would preach for an hour, 45 minutes, half an hour for my text. It was now people are doing AI work. But the Holy Spirit is the sign and the wonder there. And if we carry the Holy Spirit, you see, it is a sacrifice. As you break the flesh, what is it that you are doing in your life? If you want to move in signs and wonders, it will never be temporary that today you do this and tomorrow you fall. Because a surrendered heart, in a surrendered heart, everything must die. Everything that you learn, you wait to come to church and you hear some of you come an hour before that. Because a serenity heart lives to worship God, lives to serve God, lives to sacrifice unto God, lives for an opportunity to glorify God. And so he says, greater things than he has done, you will do. The children of Israel were signs were given were called to up to today. Israel is a sign of no wonder. How is it a small nation with a small army can survive so many mega powers fighting them? They are fighting countries on every side. They are Iran, Tehran, so much of terrorist organizations, Lebanon, and every border side, they have a country fighting them. They have multiple enemies, and the enemies are growing every day. It's not natural for a country as small as them to survive that many enemies. It's impossible. It is only by the Lord that protects Israel that Israel will never perish until Jesus comes. They will never perish, no matter what happens. Israel and Jerusalem shall not perish because the word of God says so. So what is a sign? Just as Israel was given, just as the people of Israel was given are a sign of wonder, you are one you mind Jew and Gentile, in Karachi, the Christ to Roman, Romans 19, that when you received Jesus, you became one as Jesus. In Karachi, they took his bloodline. You are one. They cut up a rose tree and they stick it together and they graft it. The DNA becomes merged. So you have the DNA. You have the bloodline. You are grafted and you become one of Jesus. That means everything else must go. Plus the broken blood diseases must go. Autoimmune diseases must go. Everything that has plagued you must go because you now you grasped it. And you are one with Jesus. And so you are one with the people of Israel. So what does a sign mean? It means a miraculous sign, a miracle, it's the evidence or a proof. It's a distinguished, distinguished mark. You can see the distinguished marks here of God. I'm sure their husbands are very worried about them and their families are worried about them. And they just, you know, you think are they gonna come out of it or not? No, they just come out of it. I know the story about uh, John Kilpatrick. Uh, he was a preacher. I honor him. He was a really true man of God in this time. He really speaks the true word and is not shy and afraid 
to be persecuted by the church and gives a warning for the church. And uh, he, before revival came to his house, he was preaching for many, many years. And one day, just before revival came, the power of God, the glory came to the house and hit him and he was knocked over. He, he slept like that <laughs> in the whole church service. There was no church. He was a pastor, perhaps. And um, they carried him out. And he was like that for many, many hours. I don't know if they left him or they carried him out, but he was like that on the ground. He was a sign and a wonder. And so, it's a display of a sign as a remembrance. You and the people that get slain will never forget it, right? The encounters they have is even more remarkable. It's a miracle. It's a display of God's power. So what does wonders mean? Wonders means a miracle. One day I went, I, I met a Jewish lady in South Africa. I went to see a property to purchase and I uh, met this Jewish lady and uh, she said to me, um, I, I, I was chatting to her ministry of the gospel because she was not safe. And I thought, what an opportunity. And then I told her about, I, I don't know what I said, but she said, oh, do you believe in signs and wonders? I said, yes. I said, do you like signs and wonders? She said, yes. I said, you need to come to my church. We have signs and wonders. She said, really? She said, you know the Jewish people, we, we love our signs and wonders. I said, but the signs and wonders are in Jesus. And she said, no, we don't really, uh, you know, believe in Jesus. I said, that's why you're missing out on the signs and wonders. But she said, I believe in the signs and wonders. You know, we used to have the signs and wonders. But when we come to, in Israel, there was lots of signs and wonders. But today, survival of Israel and them fighting and missing the Messiah is the sign of the wonder of today. Amen. Wonders mean a miracle and a display of God's power. Is that not a wonder that when the missiles are hit, it just bounces off them and does not fall? It means a mark. It means a sign which is almost like a, a banner or a trademark. A beacon of hope, a promise but most importantly, it's evidence of God's power. You remember the bees in the garden that I told you about? That we had thousands of bees that came into the garden. And uh, they came from nowhere to not to anybody. And they went away and God was trying to talk to us. Sometimes he talks to you and 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 you don't get it and you don't pay attention. So sometimes it needs to bring a big sign and a wonder to get your attention. How many of you have had that sign and wonder to get your attention? Just short of being appearing in a dream. Now I know you like dreams, but everything. And dreaming and is a sign. And um, I remember the eagles, a huge eagle, coming to our gate. We don't get a lot of eagles in South Africa. And then we had the eagle in Miami coming to our window and screeching an announcement at our window. And the Lord said to me, uh, Sharon, fly above the storms. Eagles fly above the storms. And at that time, Miami was being hit by a hurricane. And we had to fly about the songs. He knew if he didn't give us a word, we would get fearful. Fear can paralyze you. And everybody was panicked. And as we got to the airport, they said, this is the last flight out if you're not here. And if you they you know, shut down the airport, you won't be able to get out. The Hebrew word for signs and wonders is the word oath, O-T-H. Is used in the Bible to denote a token. It often refers to a visible or tangible indication of something significant, such as divine promise, covenant, miraculous event. Oath symbolizes a range of things 
including a physical mark. It is a supernatural occurrence of God. And that is why we are a supernatural church. It serves as evidence for intervention of God. It's an evidence that God is here. Everyone feels the presence of God. Everyone can sense the glory. Something is happening. In Genesis in 9, 12 to 17, God said, This is a sign of the covenant which I made between me and you. The rainbow is a sign. So I said to now, you're truly a prophetic vessel. And you didn't know that I'm preaching in signs and wonders. But Genesis is the rainbow. Genesis 9, 12, 17. I've set a rainbow in the cloud. God said that the sign of the covenant I've made to you and me, that every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations, I set my rainbow in a cloud, and it shall be a sign of my covenant between you to me and the earth, and shall be that I bring the cloud over the earth, and the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant which is made between me and you. Every and every living creature, all flesh, the waters shall never become a flood to destroy all flesh. He brought the flood upon the earth and destroyed all living, because the earth all became like Sodom and Gomorrah. The sin in the earth was so big. The sin was unbearable and God was angry. And he brought the flood before Noah, at the time of Noah. And the only people that Noah got saved, how many people you got saved? How many people did you lead to Christ? Noah was called to save the whole world. But Noah only saved his only family and animals. Maybe your dogs are saved. Your dogs are definitely saved and anointed. Definitely, right? Maybe lots of the neighborhood dogs too. No one was like that. Saved all the animals. But nobody else was saved. And God was so angry. I don't think she was going to make it. Leave her, leave her, just sit here in the front area. So when they wake up, you can, you can help them. When Noah, when the flood came, no one knew the flood was going to come and he was supposed to save everybody. God was angry and he was to destroy the entire earth. And Noah was the only righteous man. Everybody was in sin. And Noah was trying to them to get into the ark because the flood's gonna come. And God destroyed all the earth. Because nobody else was saved. No one was to save them all. God was so angry, he destroyed all the earth. And the earth flooded. But when the rainbow came out after the flood, God said he will never do that again. He was hurt. With thousands and thousands and thousands that perished. He was so devastated about his children. And he says, This rainbow shall be a covenant and a sign and a wonder. It's a sign that never again shall I bring a, a, a flood and destroy the whole land. But we're not saying. When we read that verse, never again I'm going back to my son. I know you gave me so much grace. And you said to your son, Jesus now, because no one didn't do the old job. Jesus came to save all the earth with his blood. Greater than Noah. When Jesus came, 
His blood washed your yesterday's sins, today's sins, and tomorrow's sins. There are people that you love that are going to that lost eternity. All you gotta do is to speak the word of the gospel. Maria Etta, the way they tortured her, the local newspapers used to come and see these people all slave and used to say that she is um, lots of accusations that she's false and um, you know there's uh, magic and you know people are drugged they try to justify what was happening to the people that they can't get up and all the newspapers that used to come to accuse her one pastor came and he accused her so badly and the one man that accused her viciously, the newspaper men used to all get saved. Some of them used to come out of power and fall on themselves. Now, the one man that came and criticized her, as he was criticizing her, his tongue got thick. And it got thicker and thicker and thicker. And he went home. And he told his wife, I don't know what happened to me. That woman, he spoke bad, 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 bad things about her. And he says, after I went there, and what she did to me, I can't, I can't talk. I don't know how to talk. <laughs> My tongue is getting thick. Don't ever speak a bad about a man and a woman of God. Be careful. He says, touch not my anointed. He was so bad that he couldn't speak when he got home. His wife that was not saved, he was not saved. His wife said, you better go back to that church and let that lady fix you up because you need to get your time back. So he went back and Maria told him, do you want to now receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior? And you want to stop speaking badly about God? Looks what's happened to your tongue. I'm not going to pray for your tongue to be healed until you repent of what you said. And as he did that and repented for the words that he used, we got a tongue to praise God not to speak evil about anybody. His tongue was healed, and so was his man, and so was his wife. And she wasn't so easy like you and me. She wouldn't waste time with people that would sin against God. They would just collapse, and they would not be able to get up. Some people were in that translation for three days. Praise God. It is a mercy of God when He gives us an open door and an open window to break out heaven. And God said to Noah, This is a sign of the covenant established between me and all the flesh. In Exodus 7 9, when Pharaoh speaks to you, you know, Moses was a sign and a wonder. Moses was called to bring the people of Israel into. Uh, people, uh, out of Egypt into the promised land through signs and wonders and God said to him when you show your rod it will become a serpent and as it turns let it become a serpent and as it turns show the miracles the miracle of God that as you take the rod the rod will turn into a serpent and they will be afraid the whole of Egypt was terrified of Moses and Aaron. The signs and wonders that they did were so great that the river would turn into blood. Those are the things that are happening in all the earth right now. In China, there's a, you know, there's a red skies. Do you want to wait for a sign such as that, like we had in COVID? 
for us to come into the fullness and not to play footsie with God. Some of you are the sound of my voice. I'm talking to God. I told you to do things and you haven't done it. When God gives you an instruction to ask you to do something, he's never going to give you. You know, a lot of people say, what is your order for me, God? What do you want me to do? We're always waiting for a word for God, instruction, way to go. When we're in the word, his thoughts become your thoughts. Your thoughts become his thoughts. You know what to do. But when you're out of the word and in disobedience, disobedience, my beloved, is rebellion. Rebellion is a sin of promise. God's word is fought from the beginning to the end with signs, wonders, and miracles. And in Psalms 86, 17, sometimes God sends a sign and it's not going to be good. When we're in disobedience, the light of judgment comes. Signs are not always good signs. You think the sign of the time of Noah was good? Was it good? It was. It was a harshest thing that we've never seen on the earth. Disobedience brings a judgment. For a nation such as South Africa that is in disobedience with God, that has took Israel to the court. What great judgment can come upon a nation such as that? So for you and me to live in a nation that's a gold nation, we have to really come into obedience with God. For if not what is on the nation shall come upon you. Disobedience will make you a sign of terror. And you think the terror is all around you every day. But you're not ministering to the gospel to them. Maybe you're fighting with them. Giving instruction, maybe there's a war. But you're not ministering the love of the gospel. A sign of wonder is an instrument of love. But obedience makes you a sign and wonder of his glory. We choose obedience or disobedience. Obedience or disobedience. If God has given you one instruction to do for him, he will never give you the next instruction. You can go around that mountain up to 70 years. He'll never give you another instruction. Stephen. Stephen. We apply the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Psalms 86, 17 says, Show me a sign for your good that those that hate me. Isn't that beautiful? I remember when my car was hijacked. Everybody said, you know, where's your God? How can you believe in a Jesus and get hijacked and lose your car? You almost die. You can't worship a God like that. You better go back to your car. And I said, God, I don't like that car, really. I really would like another car. But just for all my people that are talking about you like this, can you bring that car back so that they can see who you are? I don't like them to talk about you like that. As a baby as I am, I know the great God that you are. And I don't believe in the true living God because I know I suffered when I was in darkness and lost. Bring the car back, Lord, just so that they can see the God that you are. And the God the car was found not long after I was hijacked. 
But everybody I asked for, the police tried to help me shut up. I didn't know the number plates you can give them. They really tried to help me, but couldn't. I thought my best friend, and he knew all the people in the underworld that I worked with. He knew the people in the underworld that used chop cars. I never had good connections. Now I have my connection in heaven. And he said, Sharon, I'm sorry to tell you. Your car will be chopped within 24 hours. I said, no. Just try. I don't think my car is going to be chopped. Just call me and try and see if you can get my car. I will pay to buy that car back. I never got the car back. And 11 months later, 11 months later, the police called me and said to me, Sharon, I said my whole name, we, have you, uh, we, we need to get your logbook. You need to bring it. I said, why? It's been a long time. I'm on holiday, I can't come give you my logbook. And he said, no, 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 you have to bring it right away. We are reopening the case. We have a new investigation and a new investigating officer. I, was, I had a funny feeling as a baby Christian as I was. I didn't believe something was not right. And I didn't, I didn't pay attention. I wasn't going to go to the police. On the Monday, when I got back home from the weekend, Pretoria police head office called me and said, ma'am, your car is lying in the pound for months. Why aren't you going to collect your car? And I said, no one has called me. To, the police called me to say that they opened up. He said, no, no, no. Don't give your alarm to anybody. But meantime, there was a syndicate operating, selling cars, the recovered cars that being sold. And they wanted my alarm. But praise God that the Lord protected me from that because he wanted to show a sign and a wonder. And I went to the pound and every car there was either chopped, burnt, damaged, and in all that pound, I'm holding my heart, my hands, expecting my car to be chopped. And then some of them have brought panel beaters to put their cars together. And they go to the far end, the forklift, the only scrap in the car, when the forklift grabbed that car and brought it back, it was the only car. And God had answered the prayer, but the car was lying in the pound for so many months. And while I was lying in the car, my pride God was dealing with. I was being humbled. I was being humbled and humbled and humbled and humbled and humbled because I didn't even know how proud I was. Pride is the enemy of the signs and wonders. And the car came back and it was a sign and a wonder of God. That all the people could see who my God was, that he had done a miracle. In a country where they don't do, really do recoveries. It wasn't chopped for 24 hours, compared to what popular people said about the letters. In Joshua 2 12, it says, Now, therefore, I beg you, swear to me, Lord, since I've shown you. See, Joshua's praying to God, and he's talking to God, he's having a conversation. How many times have you told God, God, like what I said to God about the car? You know, you spoke of those prayers. And those things are going to come and be answered. And Joshua's talking to him now. I swear by you, God, um, since you've shown such kindness to me, you've been so good to me, God. You know, you've just done great things. You know, you've got so good to Joshua. Joshua was so obedient to God. Also show kindness to my father's house. Give me a true token and spare my father. Now Rahab was the, the prostitute, right? Rahab. Rahab 
was the lady that was the great grandmother, Rahab. Rahab. hides the men when they go in to Jericho to throw down. They, when they go into the land as they're crossing over to go into Israel in the book of Joshua to 12. And Rehab says, but you've been so kind to me. She wants a sign right? and a wonder. She doesn't know Jesus. She's not saved. She doesn't know God the Father. Therefore I beg of you, speak to me, Lord, since you've shown kindness to me and shown kindness to my father's house, give me a true token, a true sign, and spare my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters and deliver us from death. This, they, are, they are about to kill everybody. But she's saying, please can you save us? And shortly thereafter, he says, I swear, this, the man that she's hiding in the room, and he says, I... We promise you, if you help us, if you helped us, we will save. Immediately there was an answer to prayer. We will answer the prayers and save your mother and father and family. We will, everybody else will perish, but your family will be saved. In 1 Samuel number 2, 1 Samuel 10, 1 to 2, Samuel took a fast of oil. Samuel was one of the mightiest prophets that ever lived. He took a flask of oil and he poured it when Saul went to the mountain. So sometimes we go for a small thing like a license. That you know you get your license or a job, small thing, right? He went, his donkeys were missing. So he went to the prophet. Sometimes you come for a small thing, but God has come for a big thing. He went to find his donkeys, but God was making him a king. And as he went, do you feel that? You come for a small thing, but God is making you a king. He's making you a prince. He's making you a king and a priest. He's got such big things for you. You want small things because God has got great things that he's planned for you. And so he anoints him as a king. He prayed for him as a commander and he gave him the inheritance that God had called him for. And when he departed from them in 1 Samuel 10, 1 to 2, he said, as you go and you go past this territory, you will meet, with, you better go now. Because your father was worried about the donkeys. But now, you know, he, he had supper with Samuel, he, he prayed with Samuel, he fellowshiped with Samuel, time had gone and his father's not looking for his son, he's worried about his son. He says, you better go back quickly because your father was worried about the donkeys, but the donkeys have now been found. Samuel knew that the donkeys had been found. He said, you better go quickly because the, the father's now worried about you. And he says, when you go back, Samuel blessed him and sent him. And as he went back, as he went down the mountain, Saul started to prophesy. The anointing that was on Samuel came upon Saul. Immediately as he went down, they're calling him and he's hiding. And they want to call him and ordain him as king of the nation. The word that Samuel had spoken in secret on the mountain and come to pass in public. Many of you have words that God is releasing over you, that God is unlocking and unfolding a new thing in your life, a prophetic word that shall come to pass. If you let go of the old season, God is releasing it into a new season because God is taking you through the double doors. God is saying, 22, 22, what doors I open for you, no man can shut what doors I shut for you. He's shutting doors, shutting doors, shutting doors, not from him. And God says he's blessing you with the appointments of heaven. And he became
indicate the king shy and reserved and hiding, you know. You know when they call out your name and you think they're calling you, look behind your face. Talking to me. Think it's somebody else. The blessings on your life, I'm going to tell you, so big. That every time I give Wesley a word, he thinks there's somebody behind him. Every time I give him a word, he has a stick grin on his face to say, like, Sharon, I know you love me, but it's just can never be for me. And then, uh, very, very often, I give these words that are so big, I don't remember them always. They're so big, they're big, too big for me to even say. I know they're too big for you. I need you to understand that you are a sign of the wonderful God because He's a big God. Amen. And He doesn't create small destinies. He creates many destinies because He's a mega God. And therefore, the words and the destiny is called into his story. And he, and he, and he, and he, and he, Ezekiel 4 3 says, Moreover, take an iron plate. Now, sometimes he does bad signs. The sin in Israel was so bad. Sometimes your life can become a bad sign. Because he uses you to be a sign and a wonder. And he told Ezekiel, we've got to come out of your disobedience into obedience. Israel was a medicine. And he said, now Ezekiel, take an iron plate. He said to us, take an iron plate, set yourself against the wall. Put a wall, set yourself between the city and you. And now besiege the city. Lay a seat the city. Then be you besiege the city. Now let, you must put your face against the city and you must pray. You must stand in the gap for you and the city because the city are going to be overtaken. Okay? Something's going to happen and the city is going to be overtaken. Okay? Because the city is going to be overtaken, let this be a sign for Israel to warn them. You know, Isaiah used to run around naked without any clothes. Just his underwear. I don't know if he had underwear those days. <laughs> and God's not making you a son like that. So. <laughs> because Israel was naked. They were not covered with the righteousness of God. And he was trying to get their attention. You know, Amy makes uh, uh, simple McPherson. She used to. You know these great mighty men of God? She used to do ridiculous things. One day she, she put her fire suit on and she clapped, clapped on top of a fire truck and she started preaching the people because she started getting their attention. I don't know if you want me to put that on, you know? To get your attention. But I know one thing about this house. You always, all attention on Jesus. I don't have to put a fire suit on. And it was a demonstration. Prophets often are a sign and a wonder as he used the Old Testament, today the New Testament. True prophets of God are a sign and a wonder. Their life is a sign and a wonder. The word is a sign and a wonder. Presence is a sign and a wonder. But not just a man is a sign and a wonder. That sign and wonder is all God and all his ways. And when he makes you a son and wonder, it is him in you bringing direction to God. Look at Kubash Nisha, a sign and a wonder. Can't get up, stop. Can't get up, I'm not going to make a video of you, Kubash because you have privacy in the house. But you truly are a sign and wonder. And I think all the people you know got to come and see the sign and wonder. Because you're a sign and a wonder. You should have sign and wonder of the glory of God in our life. And the word of God says that the first will be last and the last will be first. Amen. And Joshua 4, 5 to 7, and Joshua said to them, Let's cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan. And each one of them, take up a stone on your, on your shoulders. Big stones, the big boulders. They all carry big, big boulders. They're not tiny little stones. I thought they were tiny little stones. Because I had a plan to take tiny stones to the Himalaya to go to the Himalayas and put a altar up on the mountain. 
it was not possible to do that. But these were big boulders, and I don't think I could carry big boulders out on the mountain. But they had to carry big boulders. Now, when you go over amidst the Jordan, take up a stone on your shoulders, each one of you, children of Israel, that there'll be a sign when your children ask you, tell us a story about how your forefathers, they're going to ask you, tell us about the story. John wants to ask you, Rina, how did you get saved? Why do you go to church and sacrifice so much? And why do you live this life? You know, you don't do all the things that everybody else does. And you tell the stories of all the miracles that God has done in your life. And he says, go and tell that now. When they talk about those stories, show them the, the stones, the boulders. Make it be a memorial offering unto the Lord that they will see that sun and a wonder. But we don't need stones anymore. You are the living stones. And you are, he says, if you don't let this, you know, if you don't worship God, you will call the stones to worship. But he makes us living stones that we worship God, right? Building us up to build the church as a sign and a wonder. When we all come together, we are the church. So he says, each one of you take the stone, put it on your shoulders. According to the number, take 12 stones and put the stones there. When the children ask what happened, tell them the story about how God took the children out of Egypt into the land of milk and honey, into the promised land. Let that be a sign of the wonder. Now I want to tell you, every single one of you, as I'm closing, you know your lives that you come from. Your life is but a sign of a wonder. For you every day say no to the enemy. Say no to the temptation. Say no to the world. Some of you are young. Say no is very hard. The fact that you say no, when they see you, they might say and giggle and laugh and say, you know, I think he needs a whiskey shot. Especially Christmas is coming as you're so boring. And yes, you might be a mockery, but you'll stand up for the righteousness of God and you become a sign of wonder. Even as they mocked Marietta, but their tongue got thick, that they could not speak about it any longer because they had to be saved. And so David said, make my enemies, deal with my enemies that are mocking me. Give them a sign of wonder that they too might be saved. Amen. And a banner, it's signs and wonders, is like a standard of God, an ensign and a banner of the Lord. Like the dove of a peep, the dove. When you see the dove, you know it's the Holy Spirit. And you know it means peace. Psalm 65, 9. Why has God created you as a son and a wonder? Because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And the Holy Spirit indeed is a son and a wonder. Remember when Jesus got saved and he, I mean, when he got baptized, when he was clothed, he didn't need salvation, he needs salvation. But when he was baptized, the heavens opened up and the peace. The heavens opened up and, the, and there was a dove. And you carry that peace wherever you go. You carry the glory wherever you go. You don't know how powerful you are. You don't know how mighty you are. Maybe up until today you have not appreciated the bigness of the might and the power of God that you are. It is humbling to know that God has called us in our nothingness to preach the gospel of God and to bring the lost to salvation. Your names I will be mentioned in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven. For your names are all written. And all the souls that you bring in, it's written there in the Lamb's Book of Life. And every time you come in into obedience and testimony, the angels run up and say, Anita has brought in the souls. Anita has come to testimony. Anita, 
she's gonna break through. Anita, children have been saved. Anita's family are not coming to salvation. Anita, every time this testimony, the angels are running up. Whose angels? Anita's angels are making an announcement. There's a trumpet blast because so it has been done as the Lord has spoken it. There's a testimony. It has come to pass. It has come to pass in heaven. And there's an announcement. People will hear about the miracles that you performed. You know, often I used to get called to go to little churches and all over South Africa when I first came to ministry. People used to call me from far and wide. And you used to hear about me from far and wide. And people used to call me from far and wide. And they used to hear about the miracles. People hear about the miracles that you, that you performed. You will become a vessel of signs, wonders, and miracles. The miraculous God is calling you to travel far and wide to do miracles in his name. In the name of Jesus. Your promotion, your business, your blessings, your peace, the fullness of God, your righteousness that you're standing, the choices that you make in your life for good of God, makes you a sign and a wonder of the greatness of God in your life. Maybe no one's going to honor you for it. Maybe you're not going to get a trophy for it. But you're a sign and a wonder for God in all of heaven. Glorifies in the decisions we've made to serve and honor God. And in closing, the signs and wonders that you work in, the fact that you live an honorable life, say no to sin, no to devil, yes to Jesus, has made you a sign and wonder and bring glory to God. I remember there was a man of God that they were trying to fire at my work for corruption. They tried fire and fire and fire. They couldn't find him. And one day somebody asked him, Are you the Christian? Everything they tried didn't work. And um, they never got to find him. Because his God was protecting him from unfairly. Any time the enemy wants to accuse you and bring you down, the Lord will protect you. I remember another man was disciplining a case, and um, while the case was going on, they shot him and they killed him. He was not a Christian. They put another man to chair the same case. And all the people were scared. It was such a big case. Do I talk to you online? You need this God. It was such a big, big case that no one wanted to take that case up. But this man said, you know what? I'm a pastor. I'm not afraid. And he shared that case. Even the enemies of this world is afraid of you because you're a sign of wonder. Yes, it's hard the journey. It is tough the road. Yes, there's many obstacles. Yes, you are persecuted in stop crying because you're persecuted. Jesus was persecuted. Take out the cross and follow him. Mary Etta slept in a tent when it rained for one week. She slept in a tent in the rain at night and preached in a wet tent in the mud in the day. No, no, I'm not asking you to do that. And there are choices that you're going to leave today. Some of us are a sign and a wonder of judgment. But we are called in the kingdom to be a sign and a wonder of the glory of God. 
as you step out of the kingdom of darkness and this abuse, I know it said there, and say no to the wickedness of Satan's temptations. We say yes to the obedience of God and we become a sign of wonder for glory. Then there's no more attacks. Then pride has to bow its head. Hijacking has to stop. I have no more hijacking. No more purses going missing. No more losses. No more debts. No more trials. Because you shut the doors of the enemy. And you can take on the rain all night and preaching in the rain. You can take on the persecution because God has called you by his name to be a sign of the light. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's, let us pray. Can we stand up? Today, I sense that God is calling you out into ministry. He's calling your children out into the kingdom of darkness. And I believe he's birthing ministries here for the kingdom of God. And I want to activate you in the call that you become a silent wonder for the glory of God. I know the journey's hard, but heaven is with you. Jesus is with you. You came for a word, but God is giving you a destiny. He's unlocking your destiny. And as we close in prayer for the guys online, thank you for connecting with Kingdom Heart of Prayer. I know this is a heavy word, but there's a, a mantle of purity in the house today. And I just sense that God is healing your hearts and healing your soul of pain that you've gone through. And He's making all things new and all things clean and all things holy and all things completely whole. Let us pray in closing. Lord Jesus. I thank you, you. that according to your word, for, for, from Isaiah 8.18, 8, 8, I, I receive the word of God, word of God that I have been created, created as children of God, children of God to be by the sign of wonder, to give glory to God, that everything in my life will bring glory to God, that my life will be a life of blessings, of overflow, of victory, of holiness, of breakthrough in God. And so today, I receive the destiny calling over my life of revival and the harvest of the end times. That I will be, by the sign of wonder, bringing revival to the kingdom of God. And today, I say no to the things that has held me back. Chains are broken over me. Chains of the enemy are broken over me. That I give myself holy holy unto the Lord. Lord. Fear, Fear and disobedience go now. Go now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I see healing here in the ovens. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, 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 yes. We speak healing, healing in the heart. Healing in the heart. I see fear, 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 being trauma and fear, being delivered from trauma and fear. Yes, 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 yes. Trauma, fear, and abuse is broken off. No more, no more, no more, says the Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And if you, if you are trusting God for those things to be broken up, can you make a line here? Let me just.
receive everything that has delayed you from coming to the fullness of your call. Everything that today is finished in Jesus' name. Behold, he's coming. Go out to me.